Hey guys, this is Tyler again with AR500 Armor. We are back at the AR500 Armor test range with our level 3 body armor. This is our tried and true $65 body armor, uh, starting at $65 that we're known for in the industry. Today we have a 7.62 by 54 all rifle round, and we've brought out a Mosin Nagant and a Vepper 54 all rifle. We're testing 8 feet away against ballistics clay to measure back face deformation to see how much deformation we get on our level 3 body armor. The indentation here in the top right is our steel ball quality control to test to make sure the clay is in spec. One round of 7.62 by 54R out of a pepper on the left hand side. One round out of Mosin and Nagant. Again, 54 r this time on the right hand side. All right, let's head down range and take a look. Full containment with our PaxCon build up coat. Doesn't look like we had any fragmentation around the edges. We have a 44 millimeter back face deformation threshold set by 06 standards. And it looks like we had excellent results. The back of the plate is still in great shape. And we're looking for less than 44 millimeters. The less is better. We're at 2.31 on the first 54 r round out of the Vepper. And on the second round, deepest part possible, 4.61 millimeter, 4.633 millimeter, right around there. That is amazing performance for a base $65 level three plate, um, unlike anything you can find. All of the 7.62 by 54 r rounds we shot today were military surplus rounds. This one has a silver tip. We're gonna throw this in the mix and show you the difference between a non-silver tip and silver tip 54R surplus rounds. All right, let's take a look. It looks like we impacted right there. No penetration, plate still looks very good. Uh, let's grab our depth micrometer and see where we ended up. All right, we have our depth micrometer zeroed out. Let's get the deepest part possible. We're at about 6.61 millimeters of back face. So you can tell that one was traveling uh, with a little bit more energy, but we are still well under the 44 millimeter threshold set by 06 standards um, for the price we've truly change the industry with our level 3 body armor. There is nothing that touches this value and performance for what you get out of it in terms of stopping power uh, for the price. We thought we were done but we decided to bring out our incendiary round. This is a 762 by 54 r rifle incendiary round, 135 grains traveling at 3,000 feet per second. We're going to shoot it out of a Mosin Nagant. We're going to back up a little bit because it is incendiary and because we are indoors. Usually that is not a good combination. Uh, we do want to note that this round does exceed the velocity to limit of level 3 body armor. We're going to shoot it on ballistics clay anyway and show you what happens. We're going to aim for the lower right portion of the clay to see if we can get a clean back face deformation reading. When I was talking about the incendiary round, I was actually holding the silver tip round. The purple tip incendiary or the Clark Custom uh, incendiary rounds we're going to try today and we're going to place it on the upper left hand side of the target and then check for back face deformation. As you can see, that is not recommended to do indoors. 
the incendiary rounds from Clark Custom Cartridge do uh, pack a punch. We had no penetration. Uh, you can look at the strike face on a plate. And you can see the burn marks. That was, um, you can fit a lot of incendiary in the 7.62 by 5.4R cartridge. The Paxcon coating was delaminated. On impact. That's a very powerful round. We'll, uh, we'll leave you with that. So in terms of penetrating, there's not a whole lot to measure on that incendiary round. It really just blew up on the surface of the plate, delaminating the line X. You can see the original three rounds, and it messed with the clay on that third shot. But you can see the original three rounds, which we, which we measured previously. There is no further indentation on the upper left where I put the round. Uh, that looks like uh, a little bit of the corner of the plate. So in terms of EFD, not much. You really just get the explosion and the incendiary effect with that round. What we want to do is give a quick overview, a quick clarification on some comments that we've seen on what happens in regards to velocity based on weapon system. The Mosin Nagant is a bolt action rifle. The Vepper is a semi-auto rifle with a uh, with a bolt system, so it takes gas and energy to cycle the bolt. That's going to give that slightly lower velocity than the Mosin Nagant because it is a bolt action rifle. Another misconception we want to clarify is that bullets accelerating um, no longer accelerate after leaving a barrel. So testing at 8 feet, we are reaching maximum velocity, pretty close to muzzle velocity in terms of impact on our armor. We do this to make sure we are getting maximum ballistic effect on target. The further the bullet travels, it does not increase in velocity, it decreases. After bullets leave barrels, they no longer have a method of propulsion and they decrease due to air resistance and other factors. Um, we encourage you to check us out on Facebook and uh, check us out at ar500armor.com. So the next question we get a lot is, what is your ballistic steel armor made out of? Uh, we post the details on our soft armor, for example, our hybrid, our hybrid armor, our three. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right.